Doctors of the World is an organisation that runs a healthcare and advocacy project for people struggling to access mainstream healthcare. We have volunteer caseworkers who will provide healthcare advocacy support to people and we have volunteer GPs and nurses who provide healthcare assessments for people. By providing this service here in the clinic, we're able to speak about what the real life impact is of hostile policies which prevent migrants accessing healthcare or which deter migrants from accessing healthcare. We're able to describe that in a much clearer way to policymakers and to lawmakers so that they can reflect and hopefully adjust the decisions that they're making to ensure that their healthcare policies are not going to have such a discriminatory impact on such a vulnerable part of our population. As a doctor, it, what matters to me is, is caring for people, is providing healthcare in an ethical way. It, it's not about picking and choosing. And I think it's a thin end of the wedge. I think if you start to exclude a certain population, if you make it difficult for them to access healthcare, it's very easy for that psychology to then spread to other groups of patients. When I first started working here, you're suddenly on the other side. So you're Having worked in GP surgeries, you're then calling GP surgeries and trying to help patients register and advocating for these patients and realising how difficult it is, even if you've got a very good grasp of the English language, if you know the system very, very well, it's still really, really difficult. Some of the challenges we see are, are with the system that currently exists, so people who are struggling to get a foothold in society, who are um, living in a precarious situation, whether they're sofa surfing, they're working in the informal labour market, um, they are undocumented in the UK. These people, when they fall sick or when they need to see a doctor or need to see a midwife if they're pregnant, for instance, the, the route to accessing healthcare, the pathway to accessing healthcare is not so straightforward. The clinic runs not to provide a parallel system to the NHS. Uh, what we're looking to do is to catch people who are falling through the cracks of the current system and to link them in with mainstream services. So we would like to see people on a one-off basis, assess what their needs are, get them to see our doctor, advocate for them to access mainstream care and then to support them further if they face barriers further down the line. We're seeing people who have come through awful circumstances, who have lost any trust in humanity, who have struggled to even get basic health care. To welcome those people, um, to show them care and kindness, it reflects back at you. People often come quite nervous, quite anxious about who we are and the service that we can provide, so we spend a lot of time putting people at ease, making sure that they understand that it's a safe place, that we're going to treat the history that they give to us in a, in a confidential way, following that disclosure that we're able to put things in place for them so that they can access appropriate support, whether it's legal support, healthcare, mental health support, that we're able to make sure that that's in place so that the person can start to take steps in the right direction towards living with what's happened or towards exiting that situation if they are in a, a current situation of, of violence or exploitation. For doctors of the world in general and here, of course the long-term hope would be that we would become redundant, which doesn't look like it would happen in the near future or even the distant future, unfortunately. Um, but I think just to be able to expand the services, um, to be able to cope with the demand, and particularly to continue the campaigns that Doctors of the World runs, because it's, I think it's through the campaigns, really, that there will be change. I think it's important that people donate to this type of organisation to give out those messages that actually, as a nation, we're, we're, we are humane, that we feel that people should have a right to receive health care. And I think it's necessary for the service to continue in the wonderful way that it does. Uh, the volunteers, of course, are volunteers that don't get paid, but the interpreters do. Um, that service is, is obviously a, a big cost. And then obviously there are the overheads and all the normal things that are involved in running any kind of service whether it's equipment, whether it's infrastructure, um, rent for example, they, those costs are all there. We run a clinic um, which every day is full so we, we always seem to be turning people away from, from the front door of the clinic which is extremely difficult to do but it's important that we, that we maintain a cap on how many people we see on a day so that we can provide a, a highly professional service to the people that we do see. When we have volunteer recruitment windows we receive far more applications from highly competent and highly qualified and skilled and committed um, potential volunteers, applicants, who 
we would be delighted to work with, but we simply, again, don't have the capacity and the space. In an ideal world, we would have the ability to recruit more volunteers um, and to work out of a larger clinic space and therefore to be able to see um, a larger population.